Hey there folks, uh, my name is Ben Rollison and I'm here to demonstrate my new 3D widgets script to you. Or scripts actually, it's actually a series of three scripts. A tool to help you navigate your way around uh, After Effects 3D space. Okay, well without further ado, um, I'd better get going because I've got 10 minutes to, uh, to get this done. The three elements are Grid, Horizon and Widget and you can install those in your Scripts folder. Or if you prefer, you can install this single 3D widgets script instead. That contains all the code you need. It's a kind of launcher. Um, the other advantage of the 3D widgets is that you can install it in your script's UI. And that means that uh, you can launch it in a docked window from the After Effects interface. Now let me quickly make a composition. Run widget 3D. Lots of different options. That will all become apparent uh, as I demonstrate it to you. So for the time being, I'm just going to hit Create. And what we get is a single layer, a locked guide layer, with the 3D widget in there. Um, it won't render if you, because it's a guide layer. You can change that up here if you want to. The main thing is for a widget to have any use whatsoever, we need to have a camera in our 3D space. So when we rotate our camera around, the, uh, the widget rotates too. In fact, I'm just going to come up to the first two effects and blow the size of the widget up and position it in the middle of the screen. That way we can really see what's going on. Um, incidentally, with the effects on widget, anything that has an XX, those are kind of key effects. Anything that has an X, they're also alterable. They're kind of aesthetic effects, colors and opacities and so on. And all of the rest of the effects, you can see there's quite a few of them, should be left well alone. That's the, uh, that's the engine, if you like. Now, there you go. As you rotate the camera around, you can see the widget rotating around too. We have our three axes, the Z axis, the X axis, and the Y axis point along the respective world axes. We have the heading and the pitch, and we have the horizon. Quickly coming back up to the effects here, I'm going to just blow the hub size up a little to show you a feature of that. So you can tell which way the axes are pointing. They render behind the hub when they're pointing away from the camera, and they render in front of the hub when they're pointing towards the camera. And you can adjust the hub size up here. AE axes, um, well, AE renders its axes a strange way round. Y actually counts downwards from the top to the bottom. I prefer it like this because I'm, I'm more used to this, um, but if you want to have the horrible truth of After Effects uh, measuring system, click this little checkbox and you'll see that the Y axis now points down and the Z axis points into the screen instead of out of it. So, let's uh, quickly line that up like that. I'm going to select two views. The view I'm looking at over here is looking directly down on the camera, just to demonstrate heading to you. As you can see, as the camera spins around, so does the little heading marker. And what the heading is indicating is where the camera points if you're looking directly down on it from above. Now, as you can see, there's a little blue marker to show when the camera is pointing directly along the z-axis, and a little red marker that indicates when it's pointing directly along the x-axis. So that's the, uh, that's the heading. Let's come around to the side now and look at the pitch. That's this little horizontal line here. That's the x-rotation of the camera if you like. And as you can see as we point directly upwards the pitch marker comes right to the top and if we point our camera directly down at the floor it comes right down to the bottom. If you're a pilot, avoid this situation. That's a bad situation. Try and keep the old pitch thing in the middle there. That's where the passengers like it. And talking about bad flying, while I'm at it, uh, let's go for a little old barrel roll. As you can see, the y-axis points downwards now. The uh, ground plane is above us. And the red, you are upside down warning light comes on. Um, indicates that you are flying upside down, so to speak. And there's another warning light as well. Let me just grab the camera here and bring it below the floor plane, which we have set to the bottom of the composition here. As I bring that below, you'll see the below floor indicator comes on and the ground has flipped. Unlike real cameras, the After Effects camera, perfectly happy filming beneath ground. 
Now finally, um, we have the ground plane here. Just to show you, you can actually change the Y level of the ground um, by moving this setting around on the widget itself. And also flip below floor. Well, if you do happen to be below the floor with your camera, like so, you do have the option to change the fact that the floor flips on or off. Everything else on here is just colors, opacities and so on is all fairly self-explanatory. So if I just delete that widget, go back to one view and run the script again, you can see all of this stuff should now make sense to you. We have the pitch, the heading, the horizon, the two alerts and the AE axis as well as the ground placement. And just so you know, there is a little bit of an overhead to running um, widget, especially if you render it quite big. Um, and the less of this stuff you have switched on, the quicker it will be. There we go, that's widget. Next up is uh, grid. Grid is very simple and by far the fastest to render of these three things because it uses After Effects' own wireframe interactions. What it does, it creates a floor grid like in a 3D program. Uh, in the default settings, the grid is 20 by 20 squares and each square is 500 by 500 pixels. That is placed by default in the middle of the composition at the bottom, but you can change that to be positioned directly underneath the camera or at the After Effects origin, which uh, counterintuitively enough is in the top left hand corner. I'm going to go with the default and just hit create. The progress bar doesn't appear in CS3, so just a note for you CS3 users. And then let's uh, move the camera there. So with widget off, let's just uh, fly the camera around a little bit. And as you can see, this is really fast. You know, this is faster than real time and a great way to just be able to orientate yourself in space without any sort of uh, rendering overhead whatsoever. Now, one little thing that's uh, slightly annoying about a, a floor plane like this is it's not infinite. It doesn't stretch all the way to the horizon. And that's where the last part comes in. Horizon 3D. Um, again, a floor placement on the y-axis uh, by default sets to the height of the composition and three options which I'm going to turn on and create. And there you go. There's our horizon. Let's just turn grid off for a second. We have a line of the horizon. We have a little indicator in the middle of that line to show which way is up and a line underneath which shows which way is down. And we have a floor fill. Again, um, very much like uh, Widget, the less of this stuff you have on, the quicker it will render. But unlike Widget, you do actually have the option to um, turn these things on and off after the event. These effects with the word beam in them, beam triangle one and two, if I turn those off, that disappears, the baseline disappears, and the beam floor, we're, just, we're left just with a line. Now here you can alter the line thickness, let's make that nice and thin or you can make it super wide, however you feel. You can change the colours, let's go for a sort of magenta and a cyan or something together. You can change the width and the height of the triangle, even turning it upside down so it points downwards if you like. Same with the baseline, you can move that a certain distance from the main horizon, you can make it wider or narrower. And there's a little checkbox here that flips the whole horizon upside down. I don't know why I did that. Just for fun, you know. And horizon is very fast as well. This is pretty much uh, real time. Okay, we've stepped down a resolution level. But again with Horizon, if we turn a few of these bits off, particularly the floor fill, you'll find it's extremely quick. And for a quick way to navigate around 3D space, then having just grid and a simple Horizon on is a fantastic way just to keep a very careful eye on where you are. Well, that's it. That's 3D Widgets. Um, my name's Ben Rollison. It's been uh, lovely talking to you. and. Uh, Speak again soon.